Good morning. Um, welcome to our service here uh, this morning. Um, this is, of course, a Kairos Sunday, so there's no teas and coffees after this service, unless you want to go up and join us at Kairos, in which case there'll be uh, baking and bacon rolls, <laughs> as well as tea and coffee. And we're delighted that that can happen again. Um, intimations are in the order of service and should also be on our website. Uh, the one I would like to uh, just bring to, or two I would like to bring to your attention. Uh, first of all, for elders, the communion invites are at the front of the church. Um, if you could uh, pick those up um, this Sunday or next Sunday. And secondly, this is the start of Christian Aid Week. And um, we don't seem to have envelopes here today, uh, but hopefully there may be some up in the the car as well and hopefully they'll be around you can give uh, you can donate online as well so that is uh, that is an option we start our service this morning with our, our call to worship lord open our ears to hear your message and our hearts to respond on this the start of christian aid week May we recognise your global family and their needs. Draw us close to you as we listen for your message to us today. Amen. We open our worship with uh, hymn 519, Love Divine. <laughs>
Let us pray. Lord, your amazing, everlasting and all-encompassing love is all around us. Out of love you have provided for us, creating a wonderful world, offering us all that you have. Out of love you came down to this world in the form of your son Jesus to show us that you understand our lives and that you are prepared to forgive us and draw us ever closer to you. Lord, we thank you that your love is absolute and unquestioning. Not, I love you if you do this or don't do that, but purely and totally and completely you love us, just as we are. Although as the perfect father, out of love, you want us to be the people you created us to be. Lord, you give us so much. Help us to share what we have and to seek to bring about your kingdom, to help you look after all your people, working to end poverty and injustice, pain and suffering across your world. Lord, we ask this in the words you taught us, as we say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I'll ask Myrtle to come and give us an all-age address, <laughs> since we don't have any children with us today. Good morning. Uh, I don't know if any of you watched Eurovision last night, anyone? Yes, we've got <laughs> at least a few hands. I watched it. I, th I think Eurovision is absolutely crazy. I love it. Um, but I always, after watching Eurovision, get really annoyed that I can't speak any other languages. I'm terrible at languages. I can barely speak English sometimes, but is there anyone out there that can speak another language? Have we got, we've got a couple other languages, yeah? What other languages we've got? French? Gallic, yes. Oh, I love languages, but I'm terrible at it. My older brother um, is a fluent Spanish speaker. He lives in Spain and is a Spanish sports journalist. He writes in Spain, he speaks Spanish, and I can never get the hang of languages. But today we're not looking at languages, we're looking at love. But love is a type of language. In fact, there is this idea of love languages, five love languages in particular, gift giving, acts of service, words of affirmation, uh, quality time, and I forget what the fifth one. <laughs> There's five of them in total. You can tell which ones um, I'm not very good at. Um, but it's this idea of we communicate love to each other in very different ways. And just like a language, we need to practice it. And the title of today's sermon is What Does Love Look Like in Practice? And it was that idea of practice that was going around in my head because just like how I'm terrible at languages but I would probably be okay if I took the time to practice them a bit. I did Spanish when I was at school. I knew a bit of it because I spent time practicing it. We need to practice love. And the idea of love languages is that other people speak love in different ways. Some people prefer to sit down and have quality time together whereas other people love it when you make them a cup of tea, help them clean their house, something like that. And it's that practice that we need to do of practicing how we show love to other people. And not only practicing what we like most, but also practicing what we don't like most. Because that's sometimes the hardest one we have to communicate, to make sure that we spread it on to other people. So my encouragement to you is to practice spreading love practice these love languages and to practice the areas of love that we sometimes struggle with. We're now going to move on to our next hymn, which is hymn 351, Jesus' Hands Were Kind Hands. Thank you.
And Margaret will now bring us our uh, Bible readings. Our first reading this morning is from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Our next reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 13. The first section is from 13 to 17, after Jesus had washed the disciples' feet. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Now the next section is from 31 to 35 in the same chapter. Um, after Judas had left to betray Jesus. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Amen. We'll now continue by singing hymn 543, Longing for Light, We Waked in Darkness.
As we come to our sermon today, um, the topic that I took, what does love look like in practice for the start of Christian Aid Week? While I was preparing for today, I came across a quote from the US philosopher and activist Cornel West. Justice is what love looks like in public, just like tenderness is what love feels like in private. Start of Christian Aid Week, we think about what we can do as Christians to help others. Thinking about this started me considering why do we have Christian Aid Week? Why do we help others? And of course, the answer is we do it to demonstrate God's love. Just as Murder was talking about the, the actions that we take in terms of, of love. Love that we've experienced from God and are told by Jesus to share with our neighbour. So I asked myself, what does love look like in practice? It takes many forms. When I held my children for the first time as babies, that feeling of absolute love and the desire to protect them, the feeling as well when they were older and they got hurt, that, hurt, that was really, really painful. I just wanted to take that pain away and bear it for them. And I remember when our son went through major spinal op operation and uh, the surgeon said to us, don't sit here for 13 hours and wait. <laughs> Go and do something for him. Go and buy him something. Find something for him to have when he comes round. And putting the love into action in that way really helped us, as well as helping him once he, he had come through that surgery. <coughs> when my grandson broke his leg, and then, yes, of course, chopped the top of his finger off. I just wanted to take his pain away. I just wanted to hold him and, 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 and be the person that took the pain, uh, not him. I also wanted to take the pain away that his parents were feeling, because I know I've been through it, and they were going through it. The awfulness of not being able to be there with all the pandemic restrictions was horrible. Wanting to hold your children and your grandchildren in that hour of need is almost overwhelming. I was privileged to be able to attend Joe Houston's memorial during the week. And I listened to his sons talk of the love he showed to them. In particular, his stepson talked about how Joe guided him to make the right decisions and to build his life in the right direction. And he said that Joe didn't do that by telling him what to do, but by asking questions and listening until Jimmy found the right answers for himself. That's a bit like God prodding me to go the right way. He doesn't stop me doing the wrong thing, just keeps prodding until I see for myself what the right answer is. God loves us and he demonstrates his love for us in all that he does. Jesus tells us that God loves us as his children and so he feels that same feeling that we do for our children. What about that love that Jesus felt? One of the shortest but most moving verses in the Bible, Jesus wept. Out of love. He demonstrated how much things meant to him. In public, he showed his feelings. But he also did something about the situation. Healing those people who were sick providing food to those people who'd come to listen to him, providing wine at the wedding in Cana, where the family would have been so horrified and embarrassed if there hadn't been enough wine for the guests, forgiving sins. Who did Jesus care enough about to weep? Every one of us, even 
on the cross, he was thinking about us. When we come to our reading in John, we read about how Jesus demonstrated his love for his disciples by being like a servant to them and washing their feet. We also read how he told his disciples to do likewise. Then later in John, we heard Jesus tell us that the greatest commandment is to love one another. What does that mean in public? Justice, as we heard. It's easy in our family, within our family, we can demonstrate love by caring, by helping, by looking after. How do we provide that justice out there in public? When we pray, the prayer that we, we prayed earlier, that Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, and reflected again in what we were singing in the hymn. John describes in Revelation the new earth where there will be no more crying, no more pain, no more hunger. God will wipe the tears from every eye. That is the love he promises. A kingdom where the earth provides what we need, where there's no more poverty, no more wars, no more hurt. But we pray, thy kingdom come. If we're to help thy kingdom come, what is our role in helping this come about? Jesus washed the feet of his disciples and told them to go and do likewise. What we are given by God, we must share with others. The world he has given us, we need to look after as he looks after us. This is how we can help bring about his kingdom here on earth. It saddens me that billions of pounds are being spent on weapons to destroy and to kill. Yet people are starving and don't have enough clean water to drink. All due to man's inhumanity to man. I'm sorry, that includes women as well. Greed, power seeking, selfishness, all result in this situation. In Ukraine, whole areas are being destroyed, obliterated. People are losing everything. Innocent children are killed. In countries, like Zimbabwe, people are starving. Climate change means their crops fail and they can't feed their children. Even in our own country, people are having to make decisions to do without food themselves, to give meals to their children, or to choose between heat or food. Yet there are companies and individuals who are building fortunes. Justice. There's a long way to go. So when we pray thy kingdom come, are we just waiting for God to take action? Or are we prepared to be his hands and his mouth? What can we do? Well, this is Christian Aid Week. We can give to the work they're undertaking to help global poverty. Climate change is an ongoing issue. We can think about our travel plans our heating choices, buying food produced locally, buying items that use less plastic packaging. I discovered recently that tea bags contain plastic. I didn't know that. So we've now started, started buying loose tea. A little bit more tricky, but it's a tiny step. But we can all take those little steps to help in every way possible. I'm sure I've mentioned before that being responsible dog owners, we of course clear up after our dogs when we take them out walks. But a while ago I realised that we were reducing the number of plastic bags that we use when we go shopping, but we're going out every day with all these plastic bags to clear up after our dogs. So, a bit of research and found that you can actually purchase recyclable bags for that purpose. Um, again, a little thing, but all these little things can add up. It is fortunate that there are those taking action. 
Christian Aid is one organisation which is helping. Their focus is not just to give money or food to people, but to invest in infrastructure that will enable people to earn and to proudly look after themselves and their families. In our own community, people are working to help those coming from Ukraine, offering shelter, practical help, support to integrate into this community. We have an active food bank that's well supported so that we can share with those in need in our community. We support Tier Fund, which again is a global organisation trying to help people out there. We all need to take action to show our love for others and to show our love for God's world. We also need to dedicate prayers to this. Prayer is also a powerful action that we can take. Never, ever um, forget about the power of prayer. Love in action. That is what will help bring God's kingdom here on earth. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I have a dream. His dream was for racial justice. As Christians, we too have a dream. A dream of God's kingdom here on earth. A kingdom where people love each other. An earth where we look after each other and the world that God created. A world where there are no longer haves and have-nots, but where everyone has water, food and shelter. A world where there are no more wars and hatred, where people can live together in peace. God's good world. Let's work to make that dream a reality. Amen. We now sing our hymn 544, When I Needed a Neighbour, Were You There? Thank you for all that you have given us. Thank you that we are able to return part of that to you through our offerings. Take these gifts and use them to bring the time closer when your kingdom comes to us here on earth. Amen. And Hannah will bring us our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession.
Father, we thank you for your infinite number of ways you show your love for us, for all the blessings you have showered on us, warm homes, satisfying meals, family and friends who love us. We thank you too, Lord, for the warm friendship and fellowship we find here in our church. We confess we often take all these things for granted and complain about the things we don't possess instead of thanking you for all that is ours, and we ask your forgiveness for this. Lord, we bring before you this morning those who are not so fortunate, the folks who are lonely because they don't have the love of family and friends, for families where there is division and anger, for those who cannot enjoy all the blessings you want to give because of illness, depression, or worry over a loved one. We pray particularly for any known to us in our family or community who need our prayers at this time. And in the quietness, we name them before you now. May they know your healing, your presence, and your peace, God. Once again, Father, we bring the warm tone country of Ukraine before you. We think now of the people in that country so badly affected by this war, the elderly, the children and their parents, the soldiers, and those trying to help in whatever way they can. We pray, Lord, that you will intervene in this situation, enter the hearts and minds of all those who are involved in the decision-making in Ukraine and Russia, that they may see the uselessness of violence. <coughs> Send your spirit among them to bring peace. Lord, in this Christian age, we pray for all those involved with this charity, in whatever capacity. Be with those who are working at the front line, whether in warm torn countries like Ukraine, or in countries where there is drought or famine. Lord, we thank you that where there is need, there are people working in your name, bringing physical health, love and comfort. Bless them, and we thank you for them. Help us to do our part by remembering them in our prayers and in our giving that this great work may continue and grow. Father, you are the light of the world. Make us shine with Christ's love in our lives. And let the light shine from our fellowship here, that those around us, in our homes, in our community, and in our church, may see your love and be drawn to you. We ask everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Hannah. And we now sing our final hymn, hymn 528, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Thank you.
Lord, as we go from this place of worship, let us feel your love and your peace. Help us to share that love and peace with others. Amen. <laughs>